This show is brought to you by GIZ, an insurance awareness coordinators group. Hello, Ghana. My name is Kwame Siampel, but you can call me Ochiame Kwame. And you are welcome to the Recovery Stories. On this show, we talk to insurance professionals. We talk to insurance beneficiaries, industry players, and advocates for insurance to share their remarkable experiences in insurance. But most importantly, we are going to go into the claims process in Ghana. The do's, the don'ts, the truths, the myths. Have you had any negative experience with insurance in Ghana? Don't worry. Worry no more. Because the experts are going to sit down with us to try to demystify it for everybody, you and I. This show is brought to you by Insurance Awareness Coordinators Group and GIZ. Insurance pays! We'll be right back and we'll get into the conversation. Stay tuned. So joining me in the studios, I have Mr. Edmond Akaho and Mr. Kofi Okwampa Akuto. So Eddie had an accident with his wife in the car. And my own brother, Okwampa, is a resource person from BAC, which means Brokers Association of Ghana. And he is also the PRO and the General Secretary. You are a big man. <laughs> Thank you very I much. hope you are here to help us demystify all these strange stories. Yes. So my first question goes to you, Eddie. I can imagine how you were distraught when this happened. Tell me what happened. Well, um, it was one night uh, around eight o'clock in the evening. Uh, from the traffic light, uh, the traffic light heading towards to La Paz area, and um, a sprinter hit me from behind. Sprinter. A sprinter. Wow. And I uh, hit. And next car, which is broken down on the side of the road, on the left side of the road. And we went, we went off like unconscious, like for a while. For, I don't know how long, but by the time we came back to consciousness and um, the sprinter, the passengers in them, and everybody were almost like they left. Some gone to the hospital, some are still hurt, bleeding on the floor. And uh, you know, at that moment, you can't think straight. You wouldn't know what to do, what to do first or next. So I had to just uh, get a ride for my wife to leave immediately to the hospital. I stayed back with the other people uh, to check if the police can come in early, then we continue from there. So uh, police came in. It rained that day, that night actually. It rained very heavy. For about 20 minutes, we were in the rain waiting. And they came in, they towed our cars to the station, and they asked us to take um, our personal effects from the car. And uh, at that moment, you know, your mind, <laughs> everything is uh, so messed up. Uh, so you have to just take what you think is needed immediately. I took them, I went home, I came back the next day. Most of my valuable things are missing out of the car. Everything was gone. And uh, I asked the police people, you know, Ghana, <laughs> they said, you told you to take it out, you didn't. Okay, I said, okay, cool. We went for a statement, uh, made the police reports, and took the reports to the hospital for treatment and other things. And uh, came back with the reports again. It was just back and forth with them, hospital, police go back to the insurance, we call the insurance and the insurance people are like, okay, please just give us the report and we can work with it, give you your money immediately. But it took me more than a month and three weeks before I got a report. From the police? From the police. We had to go to court. The court had to find the person who, was a, who caused the accident, actually. And um, the fine wasn't, um, I wasn't happy there. That's the truth, I wasn't happy. I came back with a report 
to the insurance com company for my claim. And they worked on it immediately because I had spent a lot of time with the police up and down. I couldn't, you know, take any time. And so I just had to do it fast then. So up to this point, you've been through a terrible experience with the accident and they've stolen your personal effects. Yes. Uh, the police is doing cobra, cobra. You go to the court, you are not happy. I'm not happy. So at this point, my next question is, you mentioned insurance, which means your car was insured. Yeah. Tell me about your experience with the insurance company. Don't sugarcoat it. Tell me how it went. This is it. The insurance company I, I insure my car with, they are very friendly. I, I don't know if it's just with me, but uh, they are very friendly with uh, the, way we, the way they conduct with me all the time. Me going to the hospital, they call me. Wow. Me coming back to the police station every time. How is it going? How is the process? Updates. Every time they call me and ask me these things. So finally, after the court and taking the report and everything, they treated me good. It just took about, I'll say, less than 24 hours. They called me in to come and sign and take my check. So the process just called you in. They had been with you through the process, and then they called you, and then you submitted, and then they called you for your check. Yeah. Insurance pays. Notify, submit, get paid. Insurance pays. Notify, submit, get paid. Nana, you've heard his story. Yes. Did he start right? What will be the starting point for someone in, an, in a car accident? Okay, I think he did. I mean, in that circumstance, he went off and then coming back to conscious in, consciousness and then seeing the people around and calling the police. That's the first instant of any accident. If he had his phone on him immediately, you, you take pictures of it and then you call your insurance company, your broker or agent, depending on who you are dealing with. But I, we always advise that before you buy any insurance, contact a broker. The broker will help you through all this process because he went through the process, but it was cutted. That is some of the things that tend to delay the claims processes. If you were dealing with a broker or even with the insurance company, whoever you are dealing with, he was supposed to have given you all the things that they would need for the claim to be settled. But it looks like he was on his own, trying going to the police, going to the hospital here and there. The police will also give you a form, police medical form to fill. So an insurance broker mm -hmm. or your insurance company is supposed to help you navigate the, the maze that. of the whole police, yes. hospital. Yes. Wow, I didn't know that. Yes, but usually the insurance companies don't do that. Some do not do. But when you deal with a broker, he will help you through all these guidelines from day one. So you have the police, you have the medical report, you need to take pictures of the vehicles showing the registration numbers. That is if other vehicles are involved. If it's only your car, it's showing your car the registration number, and then where there's damage. And then we'll need your driver's license, and then um, depending on the incident, if it's, there's, there's injury involved here, you have your, your wife and child yeah, no, in the, wife. Your wife, OK. Yeah, so if you were injured, then when you're making an injury claim, they will need passport size pictures of you. OK. Then the other vehicle that ran into your car, he has run into your car, but as at that circumstance, we don't know who is at fault. That is the more reason why you need the police. So mm -hmm. the police report will then tell you who was at fault, and that's why they went to court. If the court tends to find you guilty or you responsible, so liabilities on you, if they found the other vehicle responsible or guilty, then liability is on him to pay for your vehicle. Which cover did you have? Do you have third party, third party fire and theft or comprehensive? Depending on the type of insurance policy that you have, that will also determine what will let the insurance company know what to pay at any point in time. Here, from the story, we know that it was the, the sprinter driver who was at fault. And so your insurance company did not have to pay anything. It was for him, his insurance, to pay. And he was going to pay on his third party cover on any other vehicle or the occupants of his car or any other persons on the road. That is why we do third party insurance. But for a lot of times, please, listeners, when you buy insurance, it is not for the police to inspect whether you have cover or not that you buy, but for the benefit of yourself, other road users, and whoever you may come, any property that you may come into contact with. So 
depending on which cover you are buying at any point in time, some would say, okay, me pay it one woman, no. The least cover. And usually the least cover is the third parties. And that is what a lot of people buy. So hold it right there. When you say third party, what do you mean? What's okay. the meaning of third party? When we say third party cover, third party insurance, third party insurance is providing cover for any other road user apart from you yourself who is driving your car. So basically, the insurance policy will not give cover to your vehicle, but the other road user, the other vehicle. So in this case, the throttle or the sprinter, his third party cover is providing cover for your car that he ran into. So the damage, any damage to your vehicle, his insurance company is supposed to pay. Mm -hmm. But apart, that is for property damage for the car. Apart from that, he also has cover to pay for injury. Mm. So if you were injured, your wife was injured, they are supposed to pay. Also, the occupants of that throttle, the sprinter, if they got injured, he's supposed to pay. In the sense that with the throttle or taxes, you have a contractual duty to your, the occupants of your vehicle or your passengers. You are supposed to take them from that point where they boarded your vehicle to their final destination. In between, if anything happens, you are supposed to pay. And the third party policy tends to pay for all these oh, occupants. Yeah. Okay. So, almost see from now, more call, pick another vehicle and go. It doesn't end there. They were supposed to have made a claim against the driver for which their insurance company, the driver's insurance company, will pay. Okay, so when my father was in an accident and mm -hmm. died 22 years ago. Yes. The, we tried to get insurance. Yes. But they didn't give us. Okay. We tried. What happened? So, so he was. Was there a police report issued? Yes, the police was it reported issued. to the insurance company. Yes. It okay. Was reported to so the now we can make a claim. Oh. So far as it was reported to the insurance company, it was notified there. If it wasn't reported at all, then you have what you call it becomes statute bad or time bad. And for depending on whether it's injury again, years. I'm saying that once it was reported and it was notified with the insurance company, you can make a claim. If it wasn't reported, you only have about three years for injury mm. and six years for property damage to make it. We didn't wait to make a claim. So if you're able to make it around the same time and they didn't pay, what was the reason? If the reason was such that it's such that it was genuine, then that is it. If they didn't give you any genuine reason for paying that claim. There are other avenues. You can escalate from the insurance company to what we call the insurance compensation fund under the regulator, that's the NIC, where you can also lodge a complaint to them. So today, if you still have that police report in, in place, we can look at it. We can look at the responses from the insurance company and then lodge a complaint against the insurance company or send that report to the insurance commission for them to you know, react Thank to it. Thank you very much. So in very, very simple terms, yes. I want you to explain to my viewers mm -hmm. what are the types of motor insurance. OK, good. Thank you very simple much. Simple terms. In simple terms, there are three basic types of covers that we have on our market here. We have what we call the third party. We have what we call third party fire and theft. And then we have the comprehensive. For the third party, that's what I explained earlier. Third party provides cover for, your, for you against your liabilities. When I say liability, that is in the event where you run into somebody's car, a traffic light, any property on the road belonging to the government or an individual, or you run into somebody selling by the roadside, somebody, a passenger trying to cross the road or crossing the road, or any other person, any other road user, the people that you come into contact with when you are using a road, you provide cover for them under the third party. So any other person apart from you is a third party. Then we graduate to another cover we call the third party fire and theft. Under this cover, apart from looking at the other road users, we are saying that if the vehicle is involved in an accident where this accident is as a result of fire, then the insurance company will pay. Only fire. Mm. Or fire and theft. If the vehicle is stolen, there's visible evidence somebody breaks into your house and then steals your car or your car is in the parking lot, they break in, they find, have a master key and steal your, cars, your car away, or your fleet of vehicles, whichever way. So far as there's evidence of theft or you know, burglary into your car, the policy provides cover for you under the fire and theft cover, third party fire and theft. And then we have the ultimate cover, which we call the comprehensive cover. The comprehensive cover provides cover for your vehicle, as well as the other road users, including the fire and theft. So here we are talking about impact damage, which we call the accident, accident, that's impact. 
whether your car is involved in another car, they said on collision, you run into somebody's back, you, you drive into a traffic light, a tree, maybe you'll be sleeping off, and then you veer off the road, and then something happens, your car some assault, you fall off a bridge into some water somewhere. Or even when it is raining, these days, rain, your car is in traffic, it is raining, and then some water cause brings water, the road is flooded, and you drive into it, and your car is flooded. Mm. The comprehensive pace for all these. So you remember that June, from, you know, famous June 3rd, there was a lot of flood you know, claims for those who had comprehensive cover. But even with the comprehensive, we have the standard cover that provides cover up to 90% if you are a private individual, and then for companies and then commercial vehicles, up to 85%. And then we also have the 100% cover. So depending on where you are buying from, we explain all these things to you and tell you how much you need to pay under which one. Under all these, the standard market you know, cover for third party is 5,000 CDs. So whichever um, company that you are, you are buying from, if you run into somebody's car, you have up to a limit of 5,000 CDs for which the insurance company will pay a claim. And then for injuries, we have up to a cap of 50,000 for which if somebody is injured or somebody dies, the insurance company will pay up to. And that is it. Thank you. You are welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mama said, Mano. So we heard from Mr. Okwampa. We've also heard Ed's story. These are inspiring stories. We are going to go for a quick commercial break. But before then, let us look at the insurance quote of the day, after which when we come back, our live studio audience will also join in the conversation. We will see you right back. Welcome back to Recovery Stories, and Eddie here is telling us about his experience, and I, I am so inspired by it. So in all this, what was your biggest challenge? Well, um, I would say it's the police and the, the injury that I went into, the, the injury. It was, um, see, it's internal, and it was it's scary too. I thought I would maybe paralyzed or something because at a point I couldn't move. Yeah, I think the next two days after the whole incident, I couldn't move. I was stuck on bed, just nothing. I couldn't do anything. They had to take me to the hospital, carry me actually. Yeah, so um, that would be the scary thing that I don't want to, you know, face that thing again, that memory. Is, is something I've locked up, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I don't want to have that memory so again. We, yeah. we share yeah. your pain and yeah. we are with you. We are with you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. But you are, just, you are saying emphatically that apart from the police and the yeah. hospital problems, the insurance dealt with you nice yeah. and yeah. helped you heal. Insurance pays! Mr. Akuto. Can you please run us through a typical claims process? Okay. So when it comes to motor claims, I'll say, let me, I'll break it down to three main you know, types of claims. We could have what we call own damage claim. Own damage, own damage claim. Own could, damage. Own, your own damage. One was in. One was in. Uh -huh. okay. Then we could have third party property damage claim. And then we could have third party injury so injury also includes death. So when I say injury, death is so common. Okay. All right. So when you talk about own damage, usually that one is claimed under when you have comprehensive. Because under third party, there's another person involved. So the requirements will be different. When you have an own damage claim, let's say you are in your house, you are reversing, and then something strikes you, and so you drive into your gate. You damage your gate and your car at the same time. So you can make a claim for your gate and make a claim for your car under their own damage. Mm. That is when you have comprehensive. I just drove into my gate. <laughs> fast, 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 fast. So in that instance, if it's accidental, I won't say that, but I mean the case should be accidental. And usually it's accidental. So you take pictures of your car and then, I mean the pictures of the incident, 
and then you report to the insurance company. This one would not involve a police. Unless the insurance company suspects a foul play, then they will bring in the police to give us a report to indicate whether per the scenario and then what you are telling us, situation is uh, and stand on material. So you bring in estimate for repairs for the car, estimate for uh, repairs for the, the gate, and then also um, your driver's license, basically. So usually, you report to the insurance company. You give us estimates for repairs, but before then, you also give us pictures of the incident. So sometimes the insurance companies do not need to come. They look at their pictures and the estimate that we have brought. OK, by our own assessment or experience, they will know that this estimate you know, marries the, the, the pictures that we have shown us, and then they settle. So that's about the own damage. It's, it's pretty simple and straightforward. So in his case, I think I would suspect that his claim was settled under the own damage because he had a comprehensive policy. If he had a third party, then you will need to fall on the, 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 the sprinter's car. So here is the third party property damage. Where the, the other vehicle is involved or another property is involved in an accident, one, you need to report to the police. Two, report to the insurance company. Three, take pictures. In fact, in this, at the scene, if you are, you are in your right sense or frame of mind, take pictures of the accident scene, showing your registration number and the other registration number of the other vehicle that you are involved in the accident with. And then we need estimates, estimates of repairs, and then the driver's license, basically. So about five things involved. Report to the so police report, uh, report to the insurance company. They'll give you a claim form to fill. Take pictures. Take pictures. Bring estimates. Bring estimates. And then um, your driver's license, that's the final thing. The, the insurance company used to authenticate whether you are indeed licensed to drive the car. So that's about property damage. That one also does not give a lot of issues unless the people involved are not cooperative. Especially in his case, the police report was delaying. And so that would then tend to drag, drag the, the claim. Otherwise, and can you see a straightforward? Then, when it comes to injury, that's where a lot of people complain. Mm -hmm. Injury claims also the same procedure. You need to report to the police, report to the insurance company, or your broker, or your agent. But I keep on advising. It is very easy and important that before you buy an insurance policy, talk to a broker. And then in the event of a claim, he will help you. That, that's a, the major name pump on so on. So on the pump on so on so on claim. And that's when the broker comes in to help you with professionalism, mm -hmm. to help you make the claim. And to report to the, the insurance company, then you give us pictures of the, the um, incident, so the vehicles. And now, because injury, we need passport size pictures of the people who are injured. We also need pictures of the injury, depending on some people. I mean, we plan a nine. Some people can report and say there's injury on their left hand, but on their right, and then so forth. And you know, so we need pictures of all those. Then, apart from that, whoever is making an injury claim must swear an affidavit. The affidavit is is a testimony of the fact that you bring in the claim to the insurance company attest to the fact that indeed you were there. Okay. or you have been authorized, that is but with a letter of administration, you have been authorized to make a claim on behalf of that person who is injured. So, the causes of the delays could mean that all these things are being done professionally exactly. and timely. So apart from some of these, what are some of the few things that may cause delays in claims? Usually, like we are saying, the police report tends to delay, medical reports, and also the healing process. Before you make a claim for injury, we expect that you have been healed or almost healed at the point where you are only managing the injury or in the, in the case of death, the person is dead. Into, you will, whatever needs to be done has to be done. And then the family appoints your dear dear. So whoever you know, is a trustee or representing the family of the deceased comes forward with the letters of administration and then other things that the insurance company will need, including medical cause of death. Even though it's an accident, we'll still need that, or the postmortem report or coroner's report, okay. in addition to letters of administration. And all that we have said about the property damage claim. And most of this information will be found on the police report. But sometimes people come, okay, the police report says that my name was in there and I was there, I was part of the people. It is a name, it doesn't show your face. 
So apart from even showing, give us, you know, giving us the passport size pictures, we also require your, um, an ID, a photo ID. So this time, your passport, uh, voters register, and now we have the, the national ID. Uh -huh. yes. It's very important. Okay, so briefly, mm -hmm. I have two questions for you. One, you said you keep saying we should go to the broker. Go to yes. the broker. Will it not be expensive? No, 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 no. The work of a broker begins from... He doesn't charge you for anything. Okay. You see, before the premium of any insurance policy that you buy, any, is calculated, the work of a broker or an agent is factored in. Okay. So whether you use a broker or not, you, you are, are paying. paying for a broker. So if you engage a professional broker like myself, you are not paying anything to me. Whatever I'm charging you is what the insurance company is charging. Mm. Or whatever the insurance company is charging you has my fees in I there. I get it. So guys, get a broker. And then my second question, quick one. What is the longest time a claim is supposed to take? I mean, because sometimes I understand that we need to take our time, pictures, signatures, doctors, police. But what is the longest time it's supposed to take? So that when my viewers watching after one year, two years, if they are still not getting it, they know when to get angry and to report you guys. I would say that after going through all this, when the insurance company is satisfied with everything, they will give you a discharge form that they have agreed. They have made money available to settle you. It should take at most five days to settle. Five days? At most five days. At least two weeks. In the actual when you have signed the discharge form, no, within two weeks, they should pay. But I am in Tema, only five, five days. In his case, how long did it take? Until like three days or five days? Within the week? No, just about 24 hours. We just got it. So you see, so from the time that you report, the insurance companies make available funds to pay, depending on the estimates that you bring. Okay, until we come, 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 for weba, for weba, because of certain things that they suspect. When they print it down and then issue a discharge form, you read it. If you are in agreement with it, and then you sign. Acha within Monday to Friday when you submit. If you submit to by Friday, they should pay. That is the five days I'm talking about. But if it has to prolong, at least, within the second week. So it's simple. After the insurance company agrees to pay you, mm -hmm. it must take between five days to two weeks to collect your claim, Ghanaians. He said between five days to two weeks. So thank you very much, Mr. Eddie. Thank you very much, Mr. Koto. You guys thank have been you. inspiring and knowledgeable. I've learned a lot. And I know we are going to come back to this conversation. We will be right back. Insurance pays. Notify, submit, and get paid. You are welcome back to the Recovery Stories on TV3, sponsored by IACG and GIZ. And now we are in our amazing audience. Audience, clap for yourselves again for being such amazing people. Now, Emmanuel is asking the first question. Emmanuel, please shoot your question. I'm Emmanuel. This is my question. If I never get an accident after years of payment, can I come for my money? No. You can't come for your money. Whichever policy, whether comprehensive or third party, the policy says that we will pay when your car is involved in an accident. But your car is not involved in any form of accident. So based on what are you paying? Okay, fine, you want to make a claim. How much are you claiming? Are you claiming the premium that you have paid or that your sum insured, which is the value of your vehicle? Which one? And based on what? So... It becomes like a bottomless pit then. Yes, but then, see, this is under motor insurance. But you, you pay premiums under life insurance. For life insurance, it's ongoing. And even with life insurance, there are various covers. For instance, you cannot pay premium under a pure risk. When you say pure risk, it's like a funeral policy. When somebody is expected to die, either yourself or your relative or somebody, it's a, it's a, somebody must die for the, for, for the policy to respond. But the pol when nobody has died, what claim are you making? It's only, they only pay when they have what they call a rider, which says that, okay, after five years, if 
you have not made any claim, they will give you what you call cash back. Because they have invested the money over time and then they want to share the money with you. So that one is a right on the policy, but you take it from the beginning mm. when you are taking the policy. But after years, let's say you have a policy that says that I must die for my children to enjoy. Or my, my father must die for me to be able to get some, you know, the, the amount that is insured in the name of my father. Because my father is there, so I can use my father. So in my case, when my father died, I had insurance on him. So I went to the insurance company and told them my father is there. So now, contract, you no, know, as yes. uh, But the rest of the people who are on the same policy, including my mother, my spouse, and whoever I have indicated the policy, they are still there. But back away from, which is my father, in that portion, I can claim. Mm. So before you make a claim, there should be a reason. There should be a trigger. Something has happened. But if there's nothing has happened, you cannot go to the insurance company and say you want to make a claim. That's it. That's it. Thank you very much. Please clap for him. Gifty is shooting that second question. Gifty, where are you? Please. Okay, so my name is Gifty. In the case of Eddie, who lost his items in the process, who will pay for the lost items? Thank you. Thank you very much, Gifty. Unfortunately, he had comprehensive insurance, all right. But the things that he put in the car were not part of the car when the car was made. Let me, let me put it. Anything that was not part of the vehicle, when the vehicle was manufactured by the manufacturer, you cannot make a claim for it. Unless you have, made, you have an insurance cover for it under a different policy. Then you can claim under that policy. But if any part of the vehicle was taken, like the driver's mirror, oh, the, the yeah, door, the any ice. part, yeah, the radio, whatever, you know, those ones that you can make a claim for it under comprehensive and again, under fire and theft policy. But you can't make a claim on it under third party. Thank you. Clap for him. <laughs> Francesca, where are you? Please. I'm Francesca. Please, my question is, is there anything that can be done from the insurance company to speed up the process with the police? Well, what I can say, I can't say for all insurance companies. And... I can't say for every situation, because every situation and its own case. So if you say speed up, he said he, he, was, he received his premium, um, his, his um, claim within 24 hours, or I mean the next 24 hours. I think that was fast. I think that was very fast. Because for some people, they will wait until the second week. In fact, the last day of the second week, and they will be pay you the check when it's about closing, about 4 p.m. Uh, 4, 4 p.m., 4.30 p.m., then they'll give you a check on the last Friday of the day that the two weeks expires before you get your money. That is for some. But then the, the insurance industry has improved over the years. So the claims processes are also improving. But like I keep on saying, if you use a broker, it's a different ballgame altogether. You relax, we we'll help you through the process, get the documents, and then we will now face the insurance company on your behalf. So you wait. So I'll tell you, okay, we did so so and so and so that your check should be ready. And then we work as much as possible to get it earlier than that date. So if an insurance company tells me five days, I'm working with three days, actually. So that within the three days, if I'm able to get, make it in two days, that is super. But then in your mind, it should be five days. OK, uh -huh. that is how we work. So if, if you're working with a professional who is a broker, it helps you to run through the claims process faster. But then again, some of the things that tend to delay the claims process is the documentation. And we are working very hard. In fact, I must commend the insurance commissioner, Dr. Ofori, and then the IGP for a certain collaboration that is going on, so, um, Dr. Adam Parek. So we are working that thing out. It's the people on the ground. At the top, it is very fast. But the people on the ground tend to delay. So we are working you know, assiduously to that effect to ensure that these things are well done. Insurance pays. So I would like to say a very big thank you to Eddie, Mr. Akoto. We are with you. We share your pain. It's a really dangerous thing uh, to get into an accident. And thank you very much for your insights. We are really, really, really happy. And I want to say that to our exciting studio guests, you made this show amazing. Clap for yourselves.
Let us also say a very big thank you to IACG and GIZ for sponsoring this program. So until we meet again, same time next week. So until we meet again, same time next week, do not forget that once you are in a motor accident, don't forget to report to the police. Don't forget to report to your insurance company. Take pictures and then bring your estimates and wait until the insurance company deems it fit that they understand that everything is legitimate, then between five to two weeks, they are going to give you your claim. Insurance pays! Don't just leave the conversation right here. Let's continue the conversation on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, everywhere, even on WhatsApp. The handle is very simple, insurance pays GH. So join us and let's continue the conversation. My name is Ochiame Kwame. We are still on the Recovery Stories. See you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>